If you're lucky enough to have your mother around, this time of year you're probably scrolling through endless pages of ad-covered Mother's Day gift idea blogs, searching for that one thing that expresses a year's worth of love and appreciation, but also doesn't cost more than a hundred bucks. But I'm going to remind you of a little secret you knew when you were a kid but may have forgotten since then. There's one thing you can give your mom that's better than any overpriced upcycled kitsch from Etsy, better than any jewelry from a store with radio commercials you despise, even better than that lotion that smells like a thousand vanilla rainbows. It doesn't matter if it's macaroni glued to a paper in the shape of a kitten, or a brightly colored handprint next to a poem your teacher wrote for the thousandth time. Moms will always love the stuff their kids make, or at least that's what I'm banking on this year. Flowers are concomitant with Mother's Day and spring, but I can't make a flower. And even if I could, I probably wouldn't because I don't like to get made fun of. What I can make, and you probably already know this because it's written in the title and shown in the thumbnail, is a flower receptacle, a vase. And my wife wanted in on the fun too, so actually two vases for two moms. And we'll include some spectraply to give them a splash of color. Segmented turning is really easy. It's almost entirely cutting and gluing, stuff I've been doing since kindergarten. Problem is you have to do it about 400 times. If you've ever dreamed of working on an assembly line, doing the same repetitive task over and over again, then I've got a hobby for you. So we spent a number of evenings gluing these segments together, getting the vases ready to turn. This is date night at our house. Wine and tight bond, a dangerous combination. And I guess I wasn't very accurate when I cut all the segments because I was having a lot of trouble getting them lined up right. I ended up doing a ton of sanding to get nice tight joints between everything. Which I really don't mind, it's just part of the whole process. And you can look at it in two ways. Either it's tedious and boring, or it's relaxing and mindful and zen. And I'm not Buddhist, but I can see it both ways, depending on which glass of wine I'm on. I wanted to do segmented vases because I don't have the right tools to hollow out a tall vessel like a vase. So I thought, well, if I do a segmented piece, it will start out hollow and I won't have to worry about that. So I planned it all out and sized all my segments and went out to the shop to cut them. And while I was out there, like a good engineer, I decided to add a little more thickness to the segments just to make sure there would be enough wood to turn. And when I started putting the segments together into the frames, I realized that I didn't have much of an opening in the middle anymore. And when I was doing the gluing, it dawned on me that I took this perfectly good board of cherry, I cut it into a bunch of tiny pieces, and then I proceeded to spend the next two weeks gluing all those pieces back together again. And I really didn't have much to show for it since these are still practically solid all the way through. Here's how they go together. I realized later that I could just glue half of each face together and hollow it out that way, and then put the two halves together to finish the vase. So I roughed each half out between centers, then I put each half on a chuck and hollowed out the center with a Forstner bit, and my wife helped with this. I know the cool thing to do is to have nice thin walls on hollow forms, but I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's just a matter of elegance and a show of tool control and technique. Well, I'm not at that level as a turner, and if I'm being honest, even though it might be a sign of my own ignorance and lack of taste, I like a piece to have some heft to it when you hold it and pick it up. It just feels solid. This was my wife's first time at the lathe, and I'll show you how good of a teacher I am. <laughs> Don't worry, no one was hurt. So we glued the halves into a hole and remounted for final shaping. We did the outside first. My wife's getting the hang of this now. Then we drilled out the top and finished the rim. A little bit of sanding. And some friction polish as a finish. I turned it around the other way with a jam chuck and cleaned up the bottom. I'm really proud of how these came out. It was my first time trying a vase, and my wife's first time with any woodworking. Hopefully not her last time. We may not be kids anymore, but we still like making stuff for our moms. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you think.